In this second lecture on organizational behavior, we are going to uh, uh, explain the rest of uh, chapter one. And in doing so, we are going to uh, entertain the uh, origins of the field of organizational behavior and the importance of the uh, scientific method for studying organizational behavior and also uh, what threats there might be to the scientific method and, and also we uh, are going to explain the different frameworks for studying organizational behavior and, and, and some of the important issues to organizational behavior like the uh, psychological capital like the employee wellness and also some of the contemporary issues which uh, interest those who study organizational behavior. The roots of the field of uh, organizational behavior is dated back to uh, around the 1920s and 1930s where experiments later on known as the Hawthorne studies were conducted at the uh, facilities, the factories of the Western Electric in a place called the Hawthorne uh, and, and that place is uh, right outside of the uh, Chicago city. The uh, studies done started with a study concerning the physical work conditions the, uh, and they were labeled later on as the illumination studies where productivity were, were uh, drastically uh, going down and researchers were called upon in order to study the causes and try to find out what uh, caused the drop in, uh, in productivity. So uh, researchers studied the uh, plants of the Western Electric and they found that they conducted an experiment and they found that productivity actually risen in, in both the experimental group which were put under uh, better work conditions and also the control group who used to work under the old bad conditions. Uh, to their uh, astonishment, both groups' productivity uh, risen up. Uh, also in the bank wiring room and the relay room, they found the same thing. Increases in productivity uh, without, without much response to the uh, improvement in the uh, physical work conditions. Later on, they discovered that by giving attention, just giving attention to uh, those who participated in the experiments, whether they worked under the old conditions or they worked under the improved conditions, both groups, their productivity went up and uh, researchers found that the increases in productivity was attributed solely only to the fact that participants in the study were given special attention and that they were enjoying a novel and an interesting experience. <coughs> this uh, increase in productivity due to the getting uh, attention from management became later on known until today at the Hawthorne effect and also we, we we made a lot of discoveries we found that there is an impact uh, due to the style of supervision we found we discovered that there are a lot of group dynamics which goes on uh, and has an impact on uh, productivity we, we made so many discoveries which signaled out the importance of considering the human factor at, 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 at work and how they uh, 
they feel and how they respond to or caring about them and that was uh, a very important uh, discovery and gave rise to the interest in how people behave in organizations. In today's organizational behavior, it's so very important to uh, rely in, in, in building knowledge based on collected uh, data. It's very important to rely on the uh, scientific methods in order to be able to uh, conduct scientific experiments. And so important for scientific method and experiments to uh, make sure that we have both reliability and, and, and validity. Uh, reliability relates to the uh, data collection tool, to the uh, 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 consistency of the uh, data collection tools, which mean that each time we uh, measure a phenomenon, we have to yield the same results without fluctuations, without differences. And internal validity and external validity. Validity in general relates to the trueness of the collected data. And it's so very important to, uh, to have reliability in order to be able to claim validity. See, we cannot, we cannot have validity if we do not have reliability. And, and validity uh, could be classified into, into internal validity, which uh, reflect the uh, conviction that the uh, explanation of uh, the data uh, is not, is not uh, contended, that uh, there is no other plausible explanation for the data as, as internal validity. However, external validity is the ability to generalize the information generated based on the collected data. And, and we have to be so very careful that we avoid threats to internal validity. Threats may, uh, may come, uh, may come uh, from the history, the experiment subjects may be exposed to or the events which take place during the duration of the experiment the matter which may yield results affected by extraneous variables variables which are not considered in the experimental design so uh, we have to uh, to have uh, solid research designs in order to make sure that our results are, are, are true and that our results are valid. It's also important to note that nowadays we are experiencing a paradigm shift from an, the old paradigm of thinking about organizations as, as, as machines and thinking about individuals as parts of that machine. Now, because of the changes which are taking place, like, like uh, globalization, like recognition, uh, and, and, and the management of uh, diversity and, and, and the ethics and the emphasis on, uh, on making and producing knowledge and relying on individuals in producing that knowledge. These things made us view the workplace in in different, in totally different perspective than the machine-like uh, perspective. The new paradigm facing management requires a new perspective and not only an appreciation of the human and behavioral side of management, but also 
uh, apply the greatly expanding research findings for more effective practice. And, and here we have what is called the one-eighth rule. The one-eighth rule means that among today's managers, only half of them know about the new paradigm and about half of the half, which means one-fourth, know, know about it and, and practice it. However, half of the fourth, which makes one-eighth of managers, they know about it, they practice it, and they stick to it. study organizational uh, behavior over the years we uh, came up with uh, uh, three frameworks now we call them approaches the cognitive framework the behavioristic framework and the social cognitive framework the uh, cognitive model actually studies analyze the uh, cognitive processes which takes place when people uh, think about how they should behave in response to uh, to different stimuli uh, like uh, uh, when the cognitive processes such as uh, expectancy and perception help to uh, explain behavior. The behavioristic approach deals with observable behavior and the environmental contingencies of the behavior. Classical behaviorism explained behavior in terms of stimulus response, whereas more modern Behaviorism gives increased emphasis to contingent consequences or response as a result to uh, seeking the rewards the uh, stimuli may present. The social cognitive approach emphasizes that uh, the person, the environment, and the behavior itself, the three of them, are in constant interaction with one another and reciprocally determine one another. This social cognitive approach incorporates both cognitive and behavioristic elements and is used as the theoretical foundation for our organizational behavior model. Now we look at how managers themselves, now not employees, how managers themselves behave in order to fulfill the requirements of their uh, job as, as, as managers. Managers must play managerial roles in order to be able to uh, perform their managerial work and, and uh, as we're going to see in the other course of management. Managerial roles are, are 10 roles and they are classified into uh, three sets of roles. The interpersonal roles which group three rules and, and 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 classify them as interpersonal roles and, and these are the uh, figurehead role the uh, leader role and the liaison role and we also have three roles classified as informational roles 
and they are the uh, spokesperson role the monitor role and the disseminator role and managers must also play decisional roles whenever whenever they are making decisions we find that they have to be like entrepreneurs so they perform the entrepreneurial role and the uh, resource allocators after all we say that managers manage resources so they must play the uh, uh, resource allocator role and in addition to that whenever there are, there are contracts to be uh, signed with uh, customers with uh, suppliers with uh, employees with uh, distributors managers are the ones who negotiate the terms and conditions of the uh, contracts that's why they play the negotiator role managers also whenever there are disturbances whenever there are conflicts between employees whenever there are grievances in short whenever there are disturbances managers are the ones who should handle the disturbances now we turn to the managerial activities and managerial agendas managerial activities involve the routine communication the formal communication which they have to establish and and handle inside organizations and sometimes outside organizations but mainly inside organizations after all managers are in a constant quest for for collecting data they make decisions they set uh, strategies that's why they need to collect uh, a lot of information and they need to communicate to others in inside the organizations and they also have to practice the uh, traditional management uh, tasks of uh, planning decision making and controlling and they have to maintain a decent uh, network they have to do a lot of networking uh, day in and day out inside and outside of the organization also in order to get and collect the bits and pieces of information from wherever in order to uh, generate a reservoir of uh, knowledge about what's going on so they uh, later on can set uh, maybe modify maybe change maybe even change strategies and also they have to uh, to uh, to be eloquent they have to uh, do whatever whatever is needed in order to manage their human resources like uh, all people normal people usually we our friends those uh, surround us those who work with us almost everybody have some sort of a hidden agenda agenda on their minds regarding what they would uh, like to do and when it comes to organizations when it comes to the work they have agendas regarding what they would like to achieve for their uh, companies for their careers a lot, a, lot, a lot of things so uh, the managerial activities involve the agenda setting which is it is not formal it's informal and and of course it's unwritten it is up on their minds and the networking as we said before we have to uh, always do networking all the time and, and formally and informally interact with, uh, with others to collect information whether those others are inside or outside uh, the organization and when it comes to uh, agenda implementation they they use they may even go as far as manipulate their no networks whether whether members of their 
networks are 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 in upper levels of the hierarchy or 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 uh, uh, in lower levels of the hierarchy managers would uh, cut cut cross all managerial levels in order to uh, to form networks and also they uh, they have members of their networks uh, outside of the organization and they rely on them exactly the same way they rely on members of networks inside the organization itself changes in the demographics of uh, population and workforce uh, resulted in labor force and customers being increasingly culturally diverse in regard to uh, national origin, age, women, sexual orientation. There are so many reasons for uh, creating diversity in the, uh, and sources for uh, diversity in the workplace. And diversity, of course, interest organizational behavior due to its impact on many issues inside organizations, such as conflict, stereotypes, cooperation, and teamwork. And in response to diversity, organizations are adopting new programs, such as the flexible benefit plans, the compressed days, the flexible work days, and, and part-time jobs to attract and retain the their most qualified employees, attract new ones and retain the uh, qualified employees they have. Diversity also affects many employment practices and uh, it also has an impact on as organizations go global. When you go global, you uh, interact with the totally different culture and totally different employees and that adds up to the uh, issues resulting out of, of diversity. However, diversity at so many situations are like a lot of loss. Diversity allow managers to uh, listen to and experience and maybe adopt different ideas and different perspectives which come up through interacting with the diverse workforce. There are many factors which, to, which contribute to the employees uh, feeling stressed and, and experiencing uh, mental illness, the matter which uh, reflect on the employee health and, 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 and well-being. Things like uh, job security, increasing job uh, demands and uh, uh, stress which comes from uh, performing work with heavy loads of uh, responsibility and, and expectations all contribute to deterioration of uh, the physical and psychological health and well-being. So uh, employee health and well-being is, is very important because it may result in high levels of absenteeism, uh, employee turnover, uh, work-related uh, illness, so uh, managers have to uh, be uh, very much concerned about these factors and uh, it's it's very important for organizations to adopt uh, wellness programs which are designed to uh, promote mental health and and safety and the ob is concerned with creating positive work environment that uh, contribute to employee uh, health and well wellness. And, and two examples are the workplace spirituality and positive organization behavior. Workplace uh, spirituality 
provide employees with the meaning, purpose, a sense of community that they are part of, a community which cares about them. And we have to, uh, to notice that uh, workplace spirituality is, it is not about religion, but provides employees with a meaningful work life that is aligned with their values. It provides employees with a sense of belonging to a supportive community. The matter which reflect on personal growth and development. The, uh, the employees, when they experience that, they feel valued and, and supported. Also, the positive organizational behavior Positive organizational behavior is the study and application of uh, positively oriented human resource strength and, and psychological capacities that can be measured, developed, and effectively managed for performance improvement. The psychological capabilities are known as psychological capital. And uh, psychological capital is, is gaining a lot of uh, or regaining or uh, resurrecting as one of the important variables which we study in organization behavior because of its importance. It's, it's more like uh, a positive psychological state of development and and psychological capital is characterized by uh, four things like uh, like uh, self-efficacy <coughs> which is the confidence in in the ability own ability to uh, put and exert effort and succeed at, at uh, performing challenging jobs and optimism and optimism is, is when managers, see, when managers appraise you and your uh, own qualities for a work well done, and in the same time, whenever you do uh, work, uh, not in a so perfect way, or, or when you yield uh, negative results, if a manager attributes the negative results to external factors uh, which give an idea that the negative results are not because of you but because external factors to you so uh, when when managers do uh, these two things appraise you and your qualities for a work well done and attribute bad results or negative results for uh, factors external to you, factors which manager convinces you that you, you, you are not the reason for the negative results. We say that employees feel optimism and this is the uh, second factor which uh, helps to uh, build up what we call psychological capital. The third factor is uh, the, the hope. Uh, and that takes place when you uh, think about and when you plan and when you have a mind, multiple pathways for, for achieving the goal. This gives the hope that you will eventually achieve that, uh, that, that goal. Also, resilience, which refers to one's ability to bounce back and rebound from adversity and setbacks to attain success. These psychological states are not stable, but could be changed modified and develop and the research on organizational positive organizational behavior found that psychological capital 
is related to psychological well-being and positive job attitudes, behaviors, and, and job performance and negatively related to undesirable attitudes and behaviors such as anxiety, stress, and turnover intentions. Therefore, positive organizational behavior is, is effective in improving employee health and well-being by developing employees' psychological capital. Talent management reflects the uh, managerial effort to uh, attract and develop and retain and utilizing people with the required skills to meet uh, current and future business needs. And it involves a concerted effort and the involvement of all levels of management. Employee engagement is uh, like a positive work-related state of mind that is characterized by uh, dedication and, and absorption. You feel that you are completely absorbed with work and, and you, uh, you actually uh, are immense in, 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 uh, in, uh, in uh, performing your work. And it's, it's like a key uh, it is related strongly to uh, success, competitiveness, productivity, customer satisfaction, profitability, innovation, and quality. And the research found that top 25% of an engagement index had greater return on assets, uh, greater profitability and more than double shareholder value compared to the bottom 25% who scored on that index. Disengaged employees cost companies a lot of money and this study focused on the engagement of the employees. However, engagement levels vary from organization to another and, and it's called and known for managers as collective organizational engagement. For corporate social responsibility also interests organizational behavior because it uh, focuses on how behavior is enacted inside organizations while performing jobs in order to create values for the different stakeholders, the different uh, groups which interact with the organization and, and nowadays it's, it's a plus, it's an advantage for uh, corporations to show uh, the many groups uh, interacting with it that it is socially responsible about about stakeholders about environment and uh, the society at large